I've been hauling down the road Crossing streets and thoroughfares Covering so much ground Yet it could feel like I'm not going Got me some hopeful thoughts to Try to ease my troubled mind Tell myself it's all according to plan At times it feels I'm falling behind But I'm out here doing the thing folks then that stands as successful enough and when she asks me do you hope to make it I don't think of music in those terms Sign up for a major shepherding moths Gathering golden herds Concerned with winning their power plays saw the old TV on the giveaway table at the Senior Center. In the realms of high tech, it was ancient, a throwback to the 1950s. The screen was less than 10 inches. Though portable, it was heavier than she had expected, but it did have a handle and the cord was intact. What clinched it for her was the leatherette finish. 
that made it appear sporty. Bonnie looked up as she came into their apartment. He chuckled. What made you bring home that relic, Helen? You don't think it can be hooked up to our cable, do you? No need, she said, sporting it like a new handbag. It's the perfect size for my night table. When I can't sleep, I can turn it on, and if nothing else, stare at the static. If you want a small TV, I can get you one that's equipped for cable and can play DVDs. I'm sorry if it bothers you, she said softly. It doesn't bother me, he smiled. I just like to see my wife with up-to-date stuff. Why would you care how old something is? He thought about it. I guess it makes me feel good to see you with new things, like your cell phone or the microwave you hardly ever use. I told you I don't trust microwaves. There was finality in her voice. We could afford something better, he made his point. Now the jury could deliberate. She laughed. Well, if you feel that way, let's take a three-month cruise around the world. We always talked about doing that. He sat up, and she could tell he was getting his thinking in order. Then he said, a new laptop with a TV card is a lot less expensive than an around-the-world cruise. That made her smile. Bonnie, for the last 20 years, you'd say anything imaginable was a lot cheaper than sailing anywhere's romantic. There are pirates in the South Seas, Helen. She knew he had justified his position, so why bother talking? She went over to him and kissed him. Well, if you change your mind and feel romantic, I'll be in the bedroom watching my new TV. <laughs> she plugged it in under her night table. The cord reached, and she felt a bolt of happiness when she saw how nice the leatherette design looked next to her array of meds. Might as well face reality and turn it on, she said to herself. She wondered if anything would come through. The static sounded like an old drunk coughing. Then the snow gave way to wavy lines that were almost hypnotic. She remembered she was eight when her parents brought one of the first TVs home. Then on the screen, she saw her friend Sarah. That seemed strange. Did I tell you what Helen told me the other day, Sarah said? She was talking about her. What on earth? <laughs> then she saw Jennifer, Sarah's friend, who lived with her. That scatterbrain, Jennifer chuckled. Who cares what she says? Helen felt angry, betrayed, confused. She fidgeted with her wedding ring, and tears sprang out of nowhere. Abruptly, she changed the channel. The loud, drunken belching startled her. Then came snow and more black, wavy lines. On the screen, she saw Tom and Elsie in their living room. Tom was unbuttoning Elsie's blouse. Elsie didn't seem to mind. She laughed and kissed her husband of 40 years. Helen felt embarrassed, as though she were intruding, and quickly turned off the TV. Bonnie came into the bedroom. He saw she was crying. He put his arm around her shoulder. What's the matter? She shook her head and began to stammer. Jennifer said mean things about me. He shrugged. She talks that way about everyone. That's why people stay away from her at church, except Sarah, who in my estimation is a saint for putting up with her, who told you. Now she was flustered. Nobody. I saw it on the TV. He cracked a grin. You soused? She took a deep breath. Never mind, forget it. I shouldn't have said anything. I know how things like this aren't supposed to happen. So who told you anyway? He went to the bureau and found his nail clip. She pointed to the TV. If you must know, she said, I saw them on that. You out of your mind? She clenched her drawer. Just once, she sobbed. You're going to listen to what I say without making me feel like an idiot. See for yourself. She moved away from the bed. Go ahead, turn it on. <clears throat> I'll do anything you want, but please stop crying. You know how that makes me feel. Reluctantly, he went to the TV and flipped the switch. He saw the snow, followed by the wavy lines, and then the hacking and coughing started. He looked at her, and when he looked back at the screen, 
Ernie and Jake were playing gin in Ernie's family room. He peered at the screen, surprised and amazement spread across his face like a forest fire. Helen drew closer. As he reached to turn it off, she heard. You think Barney will go to the track with us on Saturday, Jake said. Doubtful, Ernie mumbled. Lost five bills the last time, probably didn't even tell his wife. Why the Rose Has Thorns. Once long ago, the flowers decided to choose a queen. Tulip, lily, and chrysanthemum were all popular, but Rose was just one of the bunch. Pretty, but not outstanding. Gentle west wind was supposed to make the decision, and she was feeling most uncertain. Let the candidates speak for themselves, whistled Robin. West wind nodded, and the leaves danced a yes. Surely I should be chosen, trilled Tulip. I am so graceful, see how my petals curl, and I dance so beautifully in the wind. Chrysanthemum waved and bowed. I outlast you all. I have such a multitude of petals that no one can count them. I perfume the air, preen lily. I am desired by all. I'd be the perfect queen. West wind sighed, and all the flowers swayed gently. I can't decide, she said. Mouse stroked her whiskers shyly and crept forward. I would like to nominate one who has not spoken, she said. Being pretty or graceful or regal is just as well. But I want a queen who is loving and helpful and kind. I nominate Rose, who is all these and more. Rose blushed an even deeper pink and murmured, thank you. Mouse ducked her head. I love you, she said softly. I want you for my queen. Thank you, said Rose. And in return for your love, I will make a safe place for you to hide from your enemies. As she spoke, all of her stems sprouted thorns that pointed in all directions, up and down and all over, until only a tiny mouse could climb between them. At her roots was a place where mouse could hide and be safe from fox and cat and owl and anyone else who would wish her harm. From that day to this, all roses have thorns. West Wind was so pleased with Rose's loving, kindly gesture, she made her queen of the garden. All the other flowers agreed, even lily, tulip, and chrysanthemum. Thank you. I am obnoxious to each carping tongue who says my hand a needle better fits. A poet's pen all scorn I should thus wrong. For such despite they cast on female wits. If what I do prove well, it won't advance. They'll say it's stolen, or else it was by chance. Thank you. Come o'er yon lee He was asking lodgings for charity He was asking lodgings for charity Would you loo a beggar man Lassie with your tower rain Well a beggar, a beggar I'll ne'er loo again Let him 
with your towel array. She says, I'll bend my back, I, I'll bend my knee, and I'll put a black patch on my knee, and a beggar, a beggar, they'll talk me to be, and a wawi. said, Lassie, oh Lassie, you're far too young, and you haven't got the cunt or the begging tongue. No, you haven't got the cunt or the begging tongue. So with me, I wanna gang, Lassie, with your tower out Your daughter Jeannie comes o'er yon lee, and she's talking him her bernie's three. She has one on her back, I another on her knee, and a third yin come in rune, lassie with your tower. The Beggar Man. Thank you. 
And then naturally as the tide rolls in thrall to the moon, starlight crystallizes in me, shine. learn to encompass this change Pearl said where her eyes love has made me wise I am something rich and strange I am something rich and strange She's a sign of the times Playing a wounded bird Stealing the worm while kissing the lips Of the fertile earth Finger painting pale blue eyes Oh looking oh so underfed Belladonna three penny operas Oh the shark bites around my head and the band sounds like a Monday night elbow room at the bar and though I'd rather be somewhere else no I can't complain in spite of it all My man at the bar, he buys the next round He's saying he's got this cure for the common muse Begs my ear like spare change Going into this every man's blues And he sings It gets to the point we don't talk no more Oh, he's finding something new to hide All them hot pregnant pauses with Venus and Mars Repelling collide And my lava lamp, black and tan, it undulates and resolves into two sides of the same old story. And the band's going, in spite of it all. Yes, yeah, reminds me of myself doing that change of phase. Such a cool, cool breeze to the enemy of us. Passions up against veiled advice. Or gotta get it now to my. In its own sweet time. (laughs) 
Yeah, it's time to go before the next band's on. It's what you get when you get caught sleeping, but the changing gone. Or build a global village in a, a tribal age. Take out some food for thought. Dawn's making tracks, don't look back when another's coming on. In the band, you know it sounds like a Monday night. Elbow room at the bar. And no, I'd rather be someplace different. No, I can't complain in spite of it all. Thank you.